You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Last night, you probably saw this news break. And if you didn't see it last night, but now you've seen it, uh, Texas and Oklahoma have agreed to exit the Big 12 after this coming season. So um, th this is uh, initially we knew that Texas and OU were having trouble with this massive buyout of their contract. Everything I had been told was Texas could front it, no biggie. Oklahoma was having a little bit more trouble putting together the, the financials to make that type of a buyout work. And a couple of weeks ago, we saw the report that it was unlikely that Texas and Oklahoma were going to be able to leave the Big 12 early as, as hoped. So it was looking like the 2025 season was when Texas and Oklahoma were going to join the SEC. Well, last night, all of a sudden, uh, this news breaks, and they've come to an agreement. Texas, Oklahoma, the Big 12, and their TV partners – on a $100 million exit fee, and essentially a portion of those exit fees are going to go to Fox to compensate for the equivalent of seven lost Texas and Oklahoma football games. I mean, just, just think about it. If you are Fox and you have the Big 12 TV package, you are going to get seven home games for Texas, seven home games for Oklahoma. And so seven games of those two schools, that's a massive chunk of your revenue as part of the rights agreement. And the other thing that kind of helped push this through, which is really interesting, um, and then we'll get to the thing that I think everybody wants to talk about, which is what does the SEC do for scheduling? So that's coming up. Um, but starting in 2024, ESPN holds the entire broadcast rights for the SEC. So not this season, but but next, everything ESP, everything SEC goes to ESPN. That's also the year USC and UCLA are going to the Big Ten. And then, of course, now Texas and Oklahoma will be in the SEC. But the big part of this deal and making it happen was a Texas-Michigan game. So Texas and Michigan were going to play a home, are going to play a home and home in 24 and in 27. Well, the 24 game was going to be in Austin, and the 27 game was going to be in Ann Arbor. The problem with that from Fox's perspective was – They'd be losing that, that, that game in 2024 if Michigan were playing in Texas. So essentially, they flipped the home and home. So now Texas is going to play in Ann Arbor in 2024 as a member of the SEC. And then in 2027, Michigan will make the return trip. So that was one of the uh, – that flip was a key driver for Fox agreeing to, to those terms. So now when Michigan – is the host team, as you know, with a, you know, Fox having a contract with the Big Ten, Michigan on Fox would get that game potentially with Texas. So that was a that was a um, uh, that was an asset, essentially a, a giant asset that the schools were, were willing to give to Fox in in making that flip. Uh, the biggest conversation. So all that, I, I quite honestly don't even know if many of you care about the particular how and or why that got done. Uh, the TV contracts, the money, the revenue, the buyout, the split. I, I think the average fan genu generally and genuinely doesn't care about any of that. It's really just, all right, who we play and when we play in them is really the question. Well, that gets a little more clarity now. Um, so in 20, and boy, what a, boy, it took a lot of time to bring this together too. I mean, I remember sitting at SEC Media Days on that Wednesday in Hoover and we had Greg Sankey booked on the show for like 15 minutes after this news broke that that Texas and Oklahoma were coming into the SEC. Uh, so you think July of 21 until August of 24, three years, man, three years as lame duck members of the Big 12, but it'll happen. And 24 is going to be lit. Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC, USC, UCLA in the Big 10, and the 12-team college football playoff. One of the reasons primarily why the SEC wanted this done for 2024, why this mattered so much for 24, is because of the expansion of the playoff. You don't want Texas and Oklahoma in the Big 12 when the, the playoff goes to 12 teams because if they make it, they're making it as members of the Big 12. You want, as me, you want, you want your 16-team league in place for the expanded playoff, it, it was one of the one of the reasons 
that the SEC wanted this to coincide. Why they were willing to do it was because of an expanded playoff. So you're not just going to, to cannibalize yourself, but you can be a maybe a 10-2 or 9-3 and three football team and get into a 12-team playoff against a really tough schedule. So, and, and we're, we're going to continue talking about this throughout the day, and I posed this question earlier today on Twitter, so I, I welcome, always welcome your feedback, but in this um, conversation in particular, the most likely scheduling format for the SEC is a 3-6 model. You will play three permanent opponents. They'll go to nine league games, so from eight now to nine. And a big part of that, obviously, was the expansion of the college football playoff as well. The, the SEC wasn't going to go to nine games, guaranteeing half of their league another loss. I mean, look, you, if everyone plays an extra game, there's going to be seven more losses. So you're guaranteeing half of your league another loss. They weren't going to go to that model if they hadn't expanded the playoff yet. So a lot of these things coincided. They had to all happen together. But if you go to a 3-6 model, what's going to happen is you'll play three permanent opponents that you'll play every year, and then you'll rotate the other six. So on a home-and-home basis. So you'll play your three permanents every year, you'll play six teams, and then the next year you'll play the other six teams. The following year, you'll play the first six just at the reverse site and then vice versa the next year. So over a four-year period, you would play every team in the league home and home. That, when we were in, in Atlanta this past summer for SEC Media Days, that's what was most discussed. We've talked about it a bunch. That is the most likely format, but there were things that had to happen. You had to get Texas and Oklahoma in. You had to expand the playoff. And the SEC's TV partners have to be willing to compensate the SEC for the additional revenue, which... I'm most certain they will, and that being ESPN now. But that's very likely what's going to happen. Texas and Oklahoma will be joining the SEC in 2024. So one more season with 14 teams. 2024, Texas OU comes in. SEC goes to 16. And, and the most likely scenario is, is the SEC goes to a 3-6 model. Three permanent opponents, six rotating opponents. So over a four-year span, you'd play every team in the league home and away. Um. So the question becomes, who are your three opponents? And this is what's a giant um, point of debate among basically every fan base. It's, it's, it's who do you want and also who or what is realistic. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, here's one. I'm just going gonna, gonna to go to my Twitter because I asked the question on Twitter. I'm just going to read the first responses I see. Uh, <laughs> head of fake Saints fan committee. Bama, Florida, A&M. There's no way that's happening. I'll tell you why. Bama, A&M, Auburn. Not happening. I'll tell you why. State, Ole Miss, Vandy is who he wants. That's uh, that's Kyle Hayes. Shout out Kyle Hayes. I, I like the way you think, Kyle. Give me the path of least resistance. Uh, my guy Doug Planchard, shout out. Said A&M, Florida, Auburn. Not happening. Um, uh, Jeff Rodell said Ole Miss, A&M, Vandy. I, I wouldn't mind that either, but that's also not happening. Um, let's see. Just a few more uh uh, John David Murray said Florida, Bama, and either Texas school. Dexter Thurber said Florida, Bama, Ole Miss. That's not happening. Uh, Bama, Florida, Arkansas said David. Anyway, so you get it. Like, my point is there is no consensus. Like, you ask fans, and you're going to get a – you could ask 10 people, and they could, get, they could give you 10 different answers. Here's what my understanding is. And, again, nothing's been decided, but – when this, this is why I go into something like SEC Media Days is so valuable because you can have these these sort of conversations on and off the record with the people around the league that are the decision makers. If it's if it's administrators like Greg Sankey or people within the, the SEC administration or or athletic directors and coaches. Anyway, here's what what is most likely going to be part of the conversation. Each team is likely to have two. I'm using air quotes. So like top half of the SEC opponents and one sort of bottom half of the SEC opponent. So you have to start. So like when someone said Florida, A&M, Bama, that's not happening. That's three top half of the SEC team. You're not getting those three. The other thing you have to do is you have to start with what you know. Like what do we know? Well, we know Bama's going to play Auburn. Georgia's going to play Auburn. Bama's going to play Tennessee. Georgia's going to play Florida. Tennessee's going to play Vandy. Ole Miss, Mississippi State ain't going nowhere. Florida, Tennessee is is likely uh, as well. So, like, I could look at Tennessee and say, okay, I know who Tennessee's three are. 
Tennessee's going to play Bama. They're going to play Florida. And they're going to play Vandy. So Bama, Florida will be their top two top half, and then Vandy will be the bottom half of the SEC team that, that they get. So you can look at certain things that you know are a given. It's like you get the chart of like vertically all 16 teams in the league and then like opponent one, two, three, and just start filling in what you know and then, then fill in everything else from there. My best guess, like so for example, LSU's not going to play Auburn. Auburn's going to play Bama and Georgia. They're not going to get LSU. So LSU-Auburn is not going to happen every year. LSU and Bama is not going to happen every year. Bama is going to have Auburn and Tennessee every year as their two top half of the league teams. LSU and Bama is not, I'm telling you, LSU-Bama, it's like, please clip this. If I'm wrong when we see the schedule and LSU and Bama are playing every year, you can come back and laugh at me. I would be floored if LSU and Bama are paired every year. I don't think LSU and Florida are going to play every year because Florida is going to have Georgia and Tennessee as their two top half of the SC teams. So when you start to chop those down, you start to look, okay, well, what's realistic? And I'll tell you, I think that LSU, and I, I, want, I want to be very clear, I'm, I'm guessing as best I can, I think LSU is going to draw Texas A&M and the two Mississippi schools. I think LSU is going to draw A&M, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State. I think that's a that is the most plausible path for how they fill this out because the trickiest part that the league is going to have to decide is what do you do with Oklahoma and Texas coming in? Do they continue playing each other every year? Does Oklahoma and Texas also draw A&M to rekindle the old you know, Big 12 rivalry or Missouri to rekindle that Big 12 rivalry? Do you look at, at Arkansas for some of the old, was it Southwest Conference days? Like, I, I don't know. That That's going to be the really tricky part. But I think what you're going to end up seeing is LSU land Texas A&M and the two Mississippi schools. And for the first time, maybe, maybe ever, maybe ever, LSU fans are going to look at the league office and go, man, they gave us a break. Because I don't see a way that LSU plays Bama, Auburn, or Florida every year. As they're permanent, so I think A and M becomes becomes the one of the top half of the SEC permanents. Sure, you could slide in Arkansas, but Arkansas, remember now has a deal with Missouri. They've also got history with with Texas and Oklahoma, which they could end up ma- matching, which also makes sense geographically. So, I, I'm I'm just putting it out there. Again, I'm not saying that this is definitive, that it's done, it's going to happen, any of this stuff. I'm just saying that I think. As this transpires, we're going to look and we're going to see LSU's three permanents be Texas A&M and the Mississippi schools. So putting that out there, we'll see what may come of it in time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.